Hello and welcome to another episode of Issues and Insights. I'm Bryce Shoemate from Hardin County Government. Man, it has warmed up and we are right in the middle of summertime. Kids are out of school and I don't want to say kids, it's young people, John. That's I mean, right. you know, That's right. people get on me for saying that kids belong to goats, right? So uh, there you go. <laughs> um, we need to say young people are out of school. And so <laughs> with that being said, we've got a lot of things going on in the summer and, and summer safety that we want to talk about today. And so uh, two of my great friends are here today. John Thomas from Elizabethtown Police Department and Tim Thomas from Hardin County Sheriff's Office. And no, before y'all ask, they are not related, okay? They that just we know simply, of. yeah, that we know, we know of. of. They just simply have the same last name. So, <laughs> guys, thank you all for being part of the show today. And uh, John, thank you for coming in and pinch hitting yes, today. Yes, so, indeed. Uh, Glad to be uh, here. Chief Mattingly was out late last night, and so he was unable to be with us today. But we'll bring him back in another time. So, uh, uh, thanks for being part of our well, show. Thank you for having us up here, uh, guys. I I know that. One of the things that we all are concerned about in the summertime after young people get out of school is different things happening on the roadway. Um, we've got more pedestrians out, we've got more bicyclists out. Um, for those uh, young people there in high school, that means we've got more people out driving That's and right. they're going to summer jobs and those kind of things. So um, our worry gets a little bit higher, our concern gets a little bit higher when we come about, uh, talk about summertime. So um, John, um, one of the things we worry about since parents will be taking their uh, young people with them more often because they're out of school, uh, what are some of the things we need to be concerned about with those young people in the car? Well, let's start with basic awareness before we even go uh, to talking about inside the car. Let's talk about the driver. You know, I think the biggest cause of collisions right now, without a doubt, is driver distraction. People are doing more inside the vehicle other than driving while they are behind the wheel. And uh, as again, as you said, during the summer months, we see a lot more traffic congestion. There's just more people out on the road. There's more young drivers out on the road and driver distraction is absolutely deadly. People are distracted by their cell phones. They're fiddling with the radio knob, putting on makeup, eating, whatever the case may be. It is important when you're behind the wheel of a vehicle that you're paying attention. And especially in the morning when I see people driving to work up Patriot Parkway, they're doing all these things as they're driving to work yes. because they're either late, they didn't give themselves enough time to prepare for the drive to work. Those extra few minutes, if you can just leave a few minutes early, you don't have to rush. You don't have to disregard a traffic light. We see that a lot around here in Elizabethtown, and I hear that a lot, people running through red lights at these intersections, how dangerous mm -hmm. it, that is. Uh, uh, reading the paper, eating breakfast, and talking on the phone and going to work, uh, that, that's distraction and uh, very dangerous. Major distraction. <laughs> and running late is not justification to <laughs> alter your driving. You don't get to drive unsafely just because you're late. So uh, you, your vehicle's not equipped with emergency equipment. You can't run through red lights. You can't speed. That's not, that's not uh, uh, pr provided by law. And so. even though we do have emergency equipment on our vehicles, we're still used, supposed to use due regard Absolutely. which means we're supposed to slow down stop yes and 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 make sure other traffic is obeying what we're doing that's so right. I mean, you know that's even right. though it's our policy and the law I would not want to go through a red light because people are distracted and looking sure. everywhere and they don't see our lights and they don't hear our sirens and uh, I'd like to get to where I'm going <laughs> that's right <laughs> and that, that's the main thing is getting to where you're going and people driving uh, we talk about summer vacation you know people are actually out driving more across the whole country uh, for summer vacation. So John, you're very, very correct on making sure that we're paying attention yes. before we get in absolutely there. absolutely critical, absolutely critical. So let's transition to the interior of the vehicle. Uh, you know, when folks are transporting their young ones, I would think it's fair to say that's the most valuable possession that they have. They're transporting the, the young ones who depend on them for everything. Uh, those lives are at stake when you get behind the wheel of a vehicle. Uh, we know that. We know all of us have seen who've worked in law enforcement the horrific consequences of people not showing due regard behind the wheel of a vehicle and, and tragic things that can happen to, to, to young children. And we certainly want to prevent that. But one of the most critical tools for keeping your children safe in a vehicle is child safety seats. And, and we talked about this, uh, you and Tim and I, before we went on. Uh, some folks still don't know what the law is when it talks about 
um, child safety seats and then transitioning to booster seats. Yes. What is the law? And, and, and that's the confusing thing, Bryce. The laws change pretty frequently. And, and that's for a good reason. As more research comes out, as they do more studies on what keeps people safe in a vehicle, things will change. Um, hopefully for the better, hopefully things get, get more safe. But as you said, a lot of people are a little bit confused about what the regulations are. So here they are, very simply in a nutshell. If your child is under 40 inches tall, it's not based on weight, it's not based on age. If your child is under 40 inches tall, by law, they must be in a child safety seat. Plain and simple. For the booster seat, between 40 and 57 inches tall and under the age of eight, they must be in a booster seat. So is there no age limit on the booster seat? Like once they get to a certain age, even though they're not at the correct height? Eight years old is, is their age requirement. If they're under the age of eight and between 40 and 57 inches tall, okay. they must be in a booster seat. Okay. Now, having said that, uh, just because the law doesn't require children eight and over to be in a booster seat, if they are in that height range, I would strongly recommend to parents keep them in a booster seat because that booster seat is what provides them that critical uh, height boost to make sure that the seat belt fits correctly. Uh, seat belts in cars are designed for adult bodies and uh, for someone who is smaller that seat belt may not come up to the exact right place. It may be up around the neck or you know even higher and uh, that booster seat provides that critical lift to make sure that the seat belt fits properly. And Tim, I, when we were getting ready to go on you were talking about a percentage that children are more likely are less likely to be hurt in a crash. How, I can't remember what you said the percentage well, was. 90% of the uh, children who die in America, uh, it's related to car accidents, vehicle accidents. So it is so important to have these children properly uh, in their child seat, in their seat belt if they're older, but not only it, the installation of the car seat, the proper uh, strapping in, in the, while they're in the car seat, if you have that breastplate and you have it down below, that's, <coughs> that's dangerous too. So we need to know how to secure our children inside of the seat and have the seat secure inside the vehicle. Now John, I know that you all offer uh, an installation, uh, somewhat of a guide uh, at, at E-Town Police Department. We absolutely do. It's a completely free program. We will do an inspection and installation of all child safety seats. You know, sometimes parents will have them installed. They'll follow the manufacturer's guidelines. They think they've done it right, but they just want to have the confidence uh, of another set of eyes, uh, trained eyes to look at it, and we do that for free. John, if, if somebody that is watching the show right now wanted to be able to come to E-Town Police Department and be able to do that, how would they, do they need to call ahead or? You can just show up. We're, we're, we have uh, installers usually available <coughs> business hours Monday through Friday, uh, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., but feel free to call first to make sure that someone's available if you want to do that, if you need to set up an appointment or even an after hours appointment. I'm more than happy to come out after hours, my, my, my normal business hours to do an installation. So if, if you need an evening or even a night installation, feel free to give us a call. Uh, it's critical to make sure that these are done right. And Radcliffe uh, the, has that same offering, uh, uh, but it's at Radcliffe Fire Department. So if you go in and ask for Tommy at Radcliffe Fire Department, they'll go through and help you align that uh, child safety seat and make sure that you're buckling it in correctly and then making sure that you're securing your child in correctly. So that's offered both at Elizabethtown and the city of Radcliffe. I believe Kentucky State Police also does this I, at I, Post 4. I believe you are. I don't know whether Trooper Sharp is the one to see, but if you'll call out at Kentucky State Police at Post 4, um, they can help you as well. So there's three avenues to be able to make sure that you've got that child in safely. And I know when we talked about seat belts, uh, Tim, you reminded us about a high-profile crash that occurred where people were killed not wearing Well, it, it kind of uh, hits home when you talk about celebrities. And, it, and, and it, Princess Diana and her fiancé, Dodi Fahid, uh, were in that horrible accident that killed Princess Diana and Dodi Fahid. The only one to survive that accident was the driver, and he was the only one that had a seatbelt on. So, I mean, you know, it just goes to show uh, and we see it all the time, right, John? We do. Uh, you know, I'm an accident reconstructionist, so one of my jobs is to investigate fatal or very serious collisions. And, and it's a sad statistic because this one is absolutely preventable, but half of fatal collisions in the United States still involve people not wearing seatbelts. 
Now, not to say that a seatbelt would have prevented a fatality in every one of those situations, but still a very high percentage of people who are either killed or seriously injured in a collision are not wearing a seatbelt. And, and, you know, sometimes people gripe, why are the police out here writing seatbelt tickets? Why don't we do something more important? Well, more people die behind the wheel of a vehicle than any other type of violent crime. That, we're out here saving lives by writing seatbelt tickets. What's more important than saving lives? It's the truth. Um, it's the truth. Yeah. And uh, it's a simple matter of having the discipline when you get in your vehicle, even before you turn it on, click that seatbelt. It saves lives. And, and early education from the children from infant all the way until they leave our homes. If you start that tradition early, they will be saying to you if you forget Dad, Mom, put on your seatbelt. And you know, Tim and John, I, 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 you all know this as well. We've heard people say, why don't y'all go out and prevent a crime? Why don't y'all go out and prevent things from happening? Well, that's what we're doing exactly right now. Right. That's exactly, exactly right. what we're doing right now. We're talking to you so we can prevent somebody from getting hurt. It's not that police like to go out and write tickets. No. That is not no. the favorite thing to do mm -hmm. is to do that but it's because of people not obeying traffic laws for their safety and not only for their safety but other people's safety that you all have to do that. That's exactly right and something that some people don't think about. During a collision, uh, it is vital that you stay inside your vehicle. You know, I've seen cases where if somebody had been properly seat belted in, although after the initial collision they may have lost control, if they'd stayed in their seat, they could have maintained control of the vehicle. Because they're bouncing around. Exactly, and, and actually may have prevented the collision from being as bad as it was. And it, it's crucial that you stay inside your seat during a collision. All the car safety features are geared towards protecting you, but you gotta be in your seat. And that's what the seat belt does. All the other safety features, the airbag system, crush technology, all these things that are designed to protect you will fail if your seat belt is not on. Sure. In my over 20 years of policing, I've had two accidents. And both of those accidents were my vehicle overturned. And by having my seat belt on saved my life. Uh, so I'm a big proponent of wearing that seat belt, keeping it on. Uh, Staying inside that vehicle, just like you said, John, is, is very important. Once, once you exit that vehicle and that vehicle's rolling and landing on top of you, breaking necks and spines, and stay in there and uh, you you got a better chance of survival. Exactly and, right. You know, I'm not proud of it. Um, crash that I had responding to a burglary in progress, um, I hit a telephone pole head on uh, because of hydroplaning and losing control had I not had my seatbelt on, I'd have been thrown through the windshield and would not be here today um, had it not been for that, that seatbelt. So, I mean, all of us have got a story that have been in law enforcement that talks about those kind of things, but a lot of people don't realize that that's what protects you. Um, Tim, we were talking before we came on about infant carriers. Yes, the uh, infant carriers you talking about the proper installation? Right, well, or, right. Or, or, well I know that John yeah. Thomas can give the proper installation, but people don't realize that you have to have an infant carrier, not just a child safety seat, but an infant carrier because the child safety seats for a bigger person or a bigger child, the infant carrier is meant for that child just as soon as it leaves the hospital. Yes, anything under 12 months old, or is that the, uh, that you have to have a child infant seat and rear facing up to, uh, uh, it, it, what is the weight on that, John? Well, there, there's some confusion on that. Because it's not an actual law. R right, it's, it's not an actual law, and every car seat is different. There are manufacturer standards uh, that will tell you, and that, that's something that we do with every child's seat installation that we do. We look at the, at the manufacturer recommendations. There are weight recommendations, height recommendations. Uh, the safest position for a child to travel is rear facing. And what we tell people as a rule of thumb, as long as they can safely travel in a rear-facing seat, and as long as the manufacturer standards allow it to be rear-facing, we recommend travel rear-facing. That is the absolute safest position for children. Frankly, it would be safer for adults to travel rear-facing, but I don't think we're going to be able to talk to it may be, to do It may that. be hard for us to drive it for yeah, rear-facing, you know. That's a tough sell right yeah, there. We uh, may have to get those automated cars, you know, that do like kind of like <laughs> Demolition Man and Sylvester Stallone when those cars drove by themselves, you know. Absolutely. Uh, one, one thing that a lot of people don't know is uh, folks out there, if you've got grandkids on the way or expecting parents, Hard Memorial Hospital will not let you leave the hospital until you have that 
infant seat properly placed in the vehicle, they will not let you take your newborn baby home until you have that in the vehicle. They won't let you get in the... That's exactly right, which is why some of the uh, our primary customers for child seat installations are expectant mothers. They come here, they make sure we have that seat properly installed so they can take their baby home uh, when, when they're done at the hospital. Bryce, well, according to the uh, Journal for Injury Prevention, Infants in rear-facing car seats are 500% less likely to be injured. A rear-facing car seat cradles and moves with the ends, which reduces stress on the fragile neck and spinal. And you know, Tim, John, a lot of people, when they have their new child, they want to put them up front, oh. thinking that they can watch them better, and that's the biggest mistake that we make as far as caring young people. That is how tragedies happen. Uh, a child is at that age is not physically equipped to deal with an air, with an airbag deployment, and that is the single most dangerous uh, aspect of putting a child in the front seat. They cannot withstand an airbag, and you will see if you look at the car at your vehicle's manual for installing a child safety seat, it will tell you never put a child safety seat in, in, in the front seat, and, and you should not. As a matter of fact, even for uh, children who have outgrown the child safety seat in the booster seat, the recommendation is don't put a child in the front seat until they're at least 13 years old. And that is for the same reason, because airbags come out with such force. Yes, it's a great safety feature for an adult, but it can be deadly to a child. Absolutely. And how many of us as passengers while traveling on vacation or whatever have put our feet up on the dashboard yes. while traveling down, sleeping? What if you have an accident and that airbag goes off? What is that airbag going to do? It's going to push your feet. You can have a seat belt on, but that's still going to push your feet and legs back into your chest and head area. Now, John, unfortunately, I hate to admit this, but Tim and I are older than you, <laughs> and we can remember the time this, this was the that's this right was that the was seat. the seat oh, yeah. belt you know and our parents <laughs> would let us stand up in the seat right next to them um, i can remember my mom and dad both throwing their hand in front of me so that uh, so that you wouldn't go for my mother does this if i'm riding with my mother <laughs> to a quick stop she puts her arm out to keep me from going up to the dashboard uh, it's just a habit and, uh, but you know in in our lifetime you grew up with seat belts, but in our lifetime, we've had to teach ourselves and make ourselves use the seat belt because it was not a law in the 60s and 70s when we were growing up. And so it, it's been rough for uh, people. My dad will tell you, he says, this is the most uncomfortable thing in my car is my seat belt. And I, you know, we try to explain that safety feature. And I still see him driving down the road holding his steering wheel here and holding his seatbelt here. You know, mm -hmm. he's gotten, so he's pretty much like that, but I'm, I'll never forget when he first, we first started the seatbelt off, he'd hold his seatbelt out here. Yeah. So. It's a new paradigm, but it's an important one. It is, yep. it is. And, and, and back in our day, uh, there wasn't as many vehicles out on the highway. Right. There wasn't as many distractions at cell phones, Bryce. Well, we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have such distractions, uh, but we found out, and that's why laws and, and safety measures are bettered every year. What can we do to help prevent tragic loss of life? And it, seat belts were the answer, and they continue to be the answer. Yes, so buckle yes, up for safety. And the bad thing is, with the increase of traffic, meaning that we've gone up from 40 to 50 percent more vehicles on the roadway in the last 20 years, but in that time frame, new roads being built has only gone up by about 10 or 15 percent. So you've got more vehicles on the roads that we were Less already space. driving. Yep. That's right. So, I mean, it, it does. And, it, and think about this. We talk about congestion. Thank goodness it's not as bad here as it is, say, in northern area like Louisville, where it's much more congested. But, you know, I've noticed our traffic on 31W, especially around town mall area and so on. Yes. The congestion is increasing as years go by. And we don't think about it. We don't think about it because we don't always consider ourselves a metropolitan area where we have large amounts of traffic, but we really do. We, yeah, we do. And, and, and the more our cities grow and the more businesses and, and places to go and see, the more traffic lights that we have, the stopping, starting, stopping, mm -hmm. starting. So yellow doesn't mean speed up so I can meet the red light. It means it's getting ready to turn right. red, stop. Right, I used uh, to tell people at traffic school, I said, 
most people when they see the light turn yellow or they're approaching a, a traffic signal they push down on the gas when you should actually be taking your foot on the gas and, and expecting it to turn exactly right exactly right so um, we talk about these things and more travel this time of year with safety uh, but let's talk about some of the things we see outside the car um, people walking pedestrians yes um, bicyclists some of the things that we need to do as motorists to um, think about them and some of the things that uh, as parents that we need to do with our young people that are riding bicyclists and not just young people but ourselves it's the truth we're, we're seeing more and more people during the summer months they start start jogging more you know they get out on the bicycles and we see of course children out of school they're going to be out on the roads more it, it's absolutely incumbent first of all upon drivers again that awareness is critical you take your eyes off off the road just for a second you know you're traveling 35 45 miles an hour at 45 miles an hour you're going over 70 feet a second you take your eyes off the road for two seconds you've traveled 140 feet and have no idea what just happened and then reactionary space from your brain telling your foot to switch from the gas to the brake because we see something yes. now it's that much farther. That's even. right. That's right. So you know, with the average person, their perception reaction time is about one and a half seconds. So there's another one and a half seconds that you've traveled before you actually hit the brakes and start coming to a stop. And unfortunately, when you get a little bit older, your um, that one and a half seconds increases. That, it does just increase. It I'm, does I'm, absolutely I'm, increase. You know, so. folks, I hate to admit this, but I, I'm I'm there. I'm 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 doing those things. That's right. So what we ha what motors have to understand is. You know, although most of the traffic you see on the road is going to be other vehicles, we have to share the road. There are going to be bicyclists, there's going to be motorcycles, there's going to be joggers and runners on the road, there's going to be children on, on the road during these summer months especially, and uh, you've got to be aware of what's on the road. Don't assume uh, that, you know, just because it's mostly cars, that's all that you're going to encounter. You're going to see more extravehicular traffic on the road. Got to be aware of that, got to keep an eye out for them, got to give them space. And we've got to be aware of each other. The, the walkers, the joggers, the bicyclists, they need to follow the same rules and, 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 and we as in the vehicle. We've got to watch out for each other. Uh, bicyclists, they, they have to follow by the same rules as a motor vehicle. Yes. Right. You, and, and, you all may not know this, <laughs> but a bicyclist can get a ticket for running a red light. Yes. I've arrested you know? a bicyclist for driving under the influence. Yes. I mean, you can't be impaired and ride a bicycle. You right. can't be impaired and ride a bicycle. Non-motorized uh, conveyance yes. is the way it says in the law. Yes. That's right. I believe I remember that. That's yeah, well done. Well done. Well remembered. And <laughs> you, you got to understand, you know, if you're on a, on a bicycle, a motorcycle, or on foot, you are less vi visible to other vehicles than another vehicle would be. And, and you need to make sure that you are taking the steps necessary to make yourself visible. Uh, if you're running after dark or in low light situations, have reflective equipment on your person, on your bicycle, uh, whatever the case may be. Make sure that other vehicles can see you. Don't take that for granted. And I see it every morning. People out jogging in solid black outfits. No, Why would you want to do that? Incredibly dangerous. Uh, it, it is. And when you're driving with the, the headlight glare and everything and somebody jogging or riding a bicycle in, in a total black outfit, with, uh, it's just so dangerous. Don't put your life at risk for this. And we have all kinds of athletic stores and uh, running souls and, and uh, academy sports and all these other sporting goods stores that offer um, reflective gear for people that do yes. jog and you know it, it, folks you don't have to buy the most expensive but buy something that reflects uh, cars headlights if you're out here jogging early morning hours or even during daytime hours something the day glow green or as the judge says my orange shirts you know uh, you can't miss me. That's right. Uh, so you, you, we've got to do those things right guys? Yeah, yeah and don't feel like it well it's my right to be out here jogging on the highway or my right to be out here riding a bicycle. Think of it as of my life. I want to protect myself and others. Why take that risk? And it's a shared. Yes. It's a shared. It's shared. Of, which, which brings up good thing. Um, you know, there were quite a few signs that were put out in the last few years that says share the roadway. Yes. And it's got the motorcycle symbol on That's there. That's right. That's right. Um, John, as we teach people to scan and search while they're driving down the road, why do you think it's so hard for people uh, to see motorcycles? Is it because we're trained to see the big object and not the smaller? That's part of it. I mean, it's just simply a smaller object. You've got a smaller thing to find in, in, in time and space. Uh, but also, 
cars have multiple blind spots yes. and uh, you have to be aware. You can't see everything around you at all times. You have to check your blind spots uh, to see what may or may not be in there. And especially when making a lane change this time of year, check that blind spot. Don't just assume because you glance at your mirror can see vehicles that you uh, are absolutely aware of what's around you. Motorcycles could be in your blind spot and you move over and something tragic happen. Uh, but it's also incumbent on motorcyclists to be aware of that. They are less visible. Um, they need to make sure that they're giving a good following space behind vehicles. Have their headlights on. Uh, yes. And, and, and motorcyclists, and I'm one, I've, I've ridden a motorcycle uh, since the day I got my driver's license. But we have to take that responsibility just because we can maneuver in and out of traffic better yes. that we don't take those shortcuts and exactly cut in right. front of another exactly vehicle. Right. And these big semi-trailer trucks, they cannot stop on a dime. You have to give them room to slow down and stop. But don't whip in front of other cars. I've seen this many times, even in town. Uh, motorcycles cutting in and out because they can. Well, because you can, you're still breaking the law. And you know, it's not the semi-truck's fault, but at 55 and 60 miles an hour, it takes the full length of a football field for them to come to a complete stop when they're fully loaded like that. Yes, and, and people out riding other people's bumpers. How many complaints do we have on that, even on the Constant. interstate and everything? And truckers too. Truckers get too close up to vehicles and vehicles get too close and riding the bumpers down. If something happens, and we see it all the time, the trucks will blow a tire and rubber will come out and, and get in your lane. That's another motorcycle. Uh, it's very dangerous when you're riding down the interstate and you run into that debris to be able to maneuver around it. Guys, when three friends get together and we talk about something that we're passionate about and uh, one of the things that we try to do with the county is when we, when we write our county newsletter every month, we try to do our show on the very topic that we're doing the county newsletter on and it's on safety this month. So it was very important to us to get you two to come in and talk about things that are safety and especially when we're talking about our roadways, our young people, and all that, and I knew we would run out of time really quickly because uh -oh. they've given me the indication we're right at two minutes. So uh, I want to thank you both for not only what you all do to serve our community, both of you, we appreciate your service for um, your law enforcement service uh, over the years. We appreciate that very much, and thank you for what you do to keep us safe. Thank you for having us down here. We really Absolutely. appreciate it. And we thank you for joining us today. Remember, Summer's not over, we're just starting, and so we've got a lot of time to go. Please be safe out there as you're, as you're going along. And again, if you're not sure how to install a car seat, John Thomas and the folks at the Elizabethtown Police Department, or Tommy at Radcliffe Fire Department, or Kentucky State Police Post 4 will be glad to show you how to properly install that car seat. And if you're not sure how to get a hold of them, we'll put the phone numbers down at the bottom of the screen so that you can reach one of those agencies. I'm Bryce Shoemate from Hardin County Government, along with John Thomas and Tim Thomas, who are not related. Uh, we thank you all for joining us. Be safe out there, and thanks for joining us on Hardin County Educational Community TV, where we keep you informed on what's going on in this great community we call Hardin County.